Hello YouTube and welcome to Groundworks. This is episode 80 of the Interplanetary Voyage of Exploration. And in previous episode we have started to graze on some jewel science, we have collected some, <clears throat> and during this episode we will be expanding on that concept. However, <clears throat> we were using only our nuke probes to do so. This time we have something more advanced planned because our exploration ships are actually approaching the jewel system. And here you can see uh, exploration 2, the science one, who is actually the first to approach mm, the jewel system. Uh, let me remind you the science <coughs> exploration ship is the one that had two ScanSat satellites and two landers or two impactor probes. It is the same one that we use for the EVE exploration um, when we were doing the episode I believe 70, EVE Ops. So now we're just setting up the maneuver node to actually <coughs> come into the Jules sphere of influence and also to come to find a suitable orbit. I'm showing this significantly time accelerated, it still has a little bit jerky motions because I was playing this at <coughs> 1 frame per second, so even if I put it to roughly 10 times times acceleration, it is still a little bit jerky. I apologize for that. <coughs> you can imagine how it was playing this in 1 or 2 fra frames per second. And the tank of oxidizer is leaking, which means <coughs> we cannot afford to lose time. So which one? Oh, it's the Oscar B fuel tank. Okay, so <coughs> we can actually act quickly here. And what we can do is just disconnect that one. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that better that than my whole oxidizer leaks through that small tank. Okay. Let's see. Decouple. Okay, so <clears throat> let's see, execute plan maneuver, perfect, and that will pass put us in the favorable position around Jewel, perfect, and once we actually get <clears throat> close to Jewel, then we will be performing the orbital insertion. Our whole ship is based on nukes, so we have plenty of Delta V. So we will just try to get and see if we can align ourselves in the orbit ar around lathe, because ultimately these impactor probes were built to actually land on a body that has atmosphere, and that's where I will want to deploy them. However, I have still some technical restrictions in terms of their deployment. First thing being that we don't, we cannot relay the signal yet, and this is because of one of the specifics of um, one of the specifics of remote tech, where we are always targeting active vessel, and none of our active vessels, which would be like impactors, have a strong enough antenna to reach Kerbin. So we will need to have another satellite that would be targeting specifically uh, the exploration ships and one comms and exploration to science. So we'll use these two stations or future stations as relays. So that's the plan anyway. So the signal will bounce off these stations and go to our impactor probes. So to be able to do that we will need to first pre-position everything and deploy the communications network. So it will be a couple of episodes before we actually start launching impactor probes on lathe, but still. That being said, in this episode we have to prepare for that and also use our nuke probe to get some more science. <coughs> okay, and we have our nuke probe that is actually uh, closing in on BOP. And 
Bob, we have you hasn't, haven't yet visited, so once again, I'm planning for a near miss. Mm, well, not orbit, but let's say um, just pass through. So let's just see if we manage to get the small enough apoapsis. Yeah, sorry, not pass through, flyby. That's the word I was looking for. Okay, and we still have 70, 721 delta V in the outer tanks before we actually start burning <coughs> with the last tank. Um, and I've said to myself, the moment we get, we ditch the two side tanks is the moment we're planning the maneuver node back home. Perfect. Mm, maneuver node executed and we will have a very close flyby of Bob. Wonderful! And our science alert already starts popping up, telling us we have a lots and lots of sweet science to collect. Great! And yes, <coughs> and then we come closer to Bob. Sorry, I, it seems that I cut a small part out, for whatever reason. And yes, coming close to Bob, and just tackling the science experiments as we go along. By the way, our periapsis is 15,915, which I believe for Bob should be more than enough. Oh, and we have a beautiful jewel rise behind Bob. Perfect. Taking some more sweet science. Jewel and two of its moons coming up beyond the horizon. Beautiful sight, definitely worth a screenshot. And three of its moon. Beautiful. Oh, and we have some more science. By the way, guys, <clears throat> I think I've noticed one thing when I was reviewing my last video, that actually when you're sending some science, <clears throat> some of them is not transmitted correctly, and that's irrespective of my electric charge. So I'm thinking for probes, I will actually have the ones that I'm planning on returning. It's only the ones that are on a one-way trip will not be uh, will be transmitting the science. Oh, screenshot right there. Beautiful. Definitely worth a screenshot. Okay. Let us continue on our flyby. We have already passed the apoapsis and we are def or periapsis and we are definitely rising. Maybe a couple of more experiments to pick up, but other than that, we should be definitely leaving Bob and its sphere of influence. Okay, and I'm just kind of looking through sifting if I have any more signs that I could send. And once our camera changed, which means we are definitely going out of the jewel, and now here I'm transmitting. <clears throat> by the way, at this stage I didn't know how much I'm actually losing by sending, so I was just happily clicking along. I only realized that like five episodes later when <laughs> recording. So yeah, what can you do? I mean, this probes will end up hopefully back at Kerbin, so I'm actually hoping to be able to scrounge some more science. And we are closing up on our sphere of influence, back to Jewel. Perfect. <clears throat> Which leaves us at a pretty decent orbit around Jewel, so I'm just now <coughs> fiddling a little bit to make sure that my orbit fits the maneuver node that I plan to execute and then I will be parking here until my transfer window comes. 
So 297 meters per second, which should be good more than enough. And I, for some reason, decided to select that origin is Drez. I have no bloody clue what I was thinking. Yeah, of course, this is post-commentary. So I'm marveling at my own stupidity how much, how huge these transfer delta Vs are. Clearly. Because they're from Drez. Hello, past Gromforks. Mm, think about it. You don't want to go from Drez. You want to go from Jewel, for God's sake. Right. So, yeah. Now I have to update the height. And this is more like it. Yes. So, transfer time and departure date. Mm, I want it to be close enough, but not too expensive in terms of overall burn. Uh, ejection delta V. 1557, it should be more than enough. So, yeah. Perfect. So, <clears throat> that being said, let us execute our maneuver node and put this nuke probe into the parking orbit in the orbit around Joule. Okay. Our faithful Kerbal alarm clock pops up and... I'm just now closing all of the experiments because I don't want them to be open. To my knowledge, they do consume some minuscule amount of power, so we really don't want to leave them open. There is no reason to do so. Okay, burning, burning, burning. This is not a big burn, but still pretty much necessary. And we are in the parking orbit around Joule, so I'm just now slowly <coughs> tilting my orbit because I do want to be equatorial more or less to Joule. Not that it's any special requirement, but we have 400 meters per second that we can afford to burn, so I'm thinking why the hell not. And I've set lathe as the target because I want it to basically be in the same alignment as lathe. Because I think lathe is more or less uh, equatorial. So yeah. Coming up on our maneuver node and getting ready to burn. One good thing that you got when you're playing with um, remote tech and flight computer, you don't need to think about the burns. You just set them to be executed and they execute. And that's just beautiful. Much simpler than the manual burns. Okay, we have 100 meters per second and I'm just now waiting for the exploration to science to come inwards towards lathe. And we will be changing the sphere of influence towards lathe. And one of our generators has aged. Well, I have plenty more, so I don't need to care. Anyway, here we are in the orbit around lathe, and I want to stop in the orbit around lathe. So I'm just gonna burn orbit retrograde at the periapsis to make sure that I perform orbital insertion burn. Uh, and I expect it to be a somewhat longish of a burn, so I'm gonna immediately execute the plan maneuver. Beautiful sight, isn't it? I'm trying to see if I can get a better angle, but no. I'm sorry if it's a little bit, some points are too much accelerated. The rest was so darn slow that it was practically unplayable, so yeah. Like I said, I do apologize for that. And we are executing the plan maneuver. So, orbital insertion burn will take us two minutes and five seconds, roughly. In the meantime, we can take a look and appreciate the lathe's fluorescent clouds and the jewel's green 
green, green grass of home. Well, Jules doesn't have grass because it's a gas giant, obviously, Dodo. But yeah, hmm, it is green and it feels very curable. That's for sure. Okay, so we are reducing our apoapsis. We already are captured in the orbit around Lathe. Or not, sorry, we are captured in orbit around Jewel. But we still have to be captured in the orbit around Lathe. And we are perfect. This is exactly what I wanted to accomplish. I mean, we will need to fix up a little bit our orbit, make sure it's nice and circular, equatorial and all that wonderful stuff. So, might as well do it now. Set up and queue maneuver nodes and be ready with it. Alright. <clears throat> Let's um, hold maneuver prograde and schedule the maneuver execution and it will take 37 seconds so not that much but still once again screenshot opportunity don't want to miss it and why well, it really looks beautiful kinda reminds me of Kerbin Alright, and as we speak, <coughs> our brave Kerbals are going to the different parts <coughs> of the solar system. I believe Rem is going <coughs> towards Chul, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, so let's see. We're setting up another maneuver node to just... Not that much, but we want to align and do a little bit of correction because I think I want it to be exactly placed. So, yeah. We want our periapsis to be at 400 mm -hmm, kilometers. Because we want uh, the our orbit to be 400 by 400. So that's kind of the main point. So making sure that we align and that's the science pro because on that one we have enough delta v so we can actually launch the smaller ships and 400 meters kilometers isn't that high up when it comes to the orbit where our ships would be basically be able to dock so yeah i consider it to be a compromise for launching both the scan sets and the impactor probe so I'll just give you guys a second to appreciate the beauty of the jewel set behind Lathe. As we perform this burn. Beautiful. Isn't it? I really like, like playing KSB because of this moment where you actually get the chance to enjoy a heavily complex contraption coming up and performing as it should. Of course, there's some fun to be had when also unplanned fun happens, but I guess that wasn't more a matter of the previous episode, and I'm pretty sure of some future ones. Anyway, guys, uh, we're coming up to the 20-minute mark, and I'm thinking, since we actually positioned our craft correctly, I'm just going to put into orbit normal, and I'm going to cut it here for this episode. So, please like if you like the episode, and hit that subscribe button for more KSP content that should be coming soon. Um, we'll do some more science, of course, in the next episode. Until then, thank you very much for watching. This is Grumforks signing off from Lathe.